Daily what you need to do is, I haven't seen news for years. Something unusual happens, my patients tell me everything anyways. Right? Then, I, then I go and look if I want to see it. It's called news fast. Why? Because 90% of all that is bad news anyways. It messes your head and it's, you can't do anything about it anyways. But you need to know what's going on, but you don't have to be so focused on all the stuff going on that it just overwhelms you. So we're still talking about the bedtime deep sleep ritual. One of the biggest problems we have is stress. How do we overcome stress? How do we de-stress? And there are five de-stress rituals that I recommend daily basis or weekly basis to overcome your stress so that you can have the deepest sleep possible at nighttime. The first thing is to rest. Well, we have this, we talked about the circadian rhythm, which is 24 hours, but within the circadian rhythm, every 90 to 120 minutes, about hour and a half to two hours, there's a smaller rhythm within, within the big rhythm it's to make sure that you abide or you go by the smaller cycle, you have to take a break every 90 to 100 minutes so that you go with the cycle. In other words, you can't keep working, working, working. You have to kind of wind down a little bit so you can get a, uh, a deeper working uh, or, or energy within that smaller uh, cycle. So you need to take a break. You get up and change environment. You can go to the restroom. You can, you can take a short walk around. You can go upstairs, downstairs, whatever you have to do to change uh, where you are right now to really de-stress, to bring that high level of stress down, uh, down so that you're ready to go up stress again and do the work. And then change your perception. Not only you have to physically move, but change your perception. If something stressful happens, we call it reframing. You ask these two questions. What does this mean? What should I learn from this? Especially the second one. If somebody's really mean to you, somebody's really terrible to you, something really stressful came to you, you have to reframe. Because at the end of the day, after the stress events uh, went by, you, you look back and say, why was I so stressed? It was going to work out anyways. You know? What do I have to learn from this? Well, you have to learn that you have to be patient. <laughs> you can't just look at what's going on to determine that's what really happened. Because you don't know until a while later that those events were necessary for the next step. And I see it all the time now as I'm getting older. Every time something happens, I don't react right away and say, oh my God, I'm so upset, blah, blah, blah. Well, I used to do a lot of that. But I try to go, okay, well, what does this mean? What can I learn from this? Maybe it's, it's not going to be a problem later on. See, you have to kind of reframe it because if you get all stressed about everything, then it's, it's all bets are off. You, you just can't go to sleep. Yeah, and it's very, very difficult to keep really good health, especially your sugar level down. Second one is to vacate. You, you can walk to the park, you can go to the nature. Just go and observe all the plants. Look at the birds. When you look at those things, you cannot think about the stress. You, you cannot think about all these bad things going on because nature is just so amazing. It's, it's, you see these little plants coming up from nothing. And we're like, wow, this is amazing. This is still alive, you see? So that's what you do. Declutter. Clean your desk. Clean your environment. You know, uh, take some time, like take an hour to really clean something. Clean your closet. Clean your shoe closet. Whatever you have to do. And donate to my shoe drive, right? Every, day we, every year we have shoe drive. So clean your shoe closet. Stuff that you haven't worn, give it to us so that we can donate to the homeless people, right? So you need to clean Feel good, feel better about doing something positive for the community and people around you. And that's what you do, declutter, clean. Monthly vacation, I try to go on vacation every month. Well, I don't have to travel far away. We can go like local, we can go to Santa Monica Beach. It's, it's an hour away, but it, it looks like a whole, another country. <laughs> or go down to San Diego, it takes a couple, couple hours. Go do a, some, some, you know, go to some remote area, go, go for some hiking, some, someplace different uh, monthly. And yearly, we try to go to Korea, you know, annually. We haven't been since last year, but we try to go somewhere different. Why? Because it's a great experience with your family, and then you learn, you meet all these people, different culture, you know. Try to go do something, but you don't have to go, like, expensive places or go too far. Just go locally, someplace different, uh, where you uh, meet different people and talk to different people, right? So this is different. We're about halfway through my bedtime deep, deep sleep rituals. If you enjoyed this video so far or learned something new, leave the word bedtime rituals in my comments below. If you'd like me to elaborate and go deeper into a specific topic, please write, tell me more about blank, such as grounding or heart locking exercise. 
then I will soon make a video on that topic for you. Be sure to also give this video a thumbs up. Daily what you need to do is, I haven't seen news for years. Something unusual happens, my patients tell me everything anyways. Right? Then, I, then I go and look if I want to see it. It's called news fast. Why? Because 90% of all that is bad news anyways. It messes your head and it's, you can't do anything about it anyways. But you need to know what's going on. But you don't have to be so focused on all the stuff going on that it just overwhelms you. And then TV fast. Well, I don't watch TV anymore. So, but a lot of you just literally sitting there watching TV all day long. A lot of you doing that. And that makes you gain weight. That, uh, that makes you become more diabetic and not able to... Uh, handle all the sugar that's coming in, right? Because you're sitting all day. On top of that, you haven't moved at all, so that high level of, of activity is not high, and then it's kind of flat curve. And then, guess what? You can't get deep sleep either. So you're kind of flatlined, right? So you go high, low, high, low, supposed to be like this. Now it's flatlined, flatlined, and guess what? Soon there won't be any line, and you won't be here anymore, right? That's the direction you're going. I'm sorry to put it this way, but you need high level, you need low level, you need to really make sure it works like that. So that's what I do for the vacate. Third one, recreate. Recreation. Recreate. Recreate yourself. How do you do a real recreation? I picked up golf last year. I'm not very good at it. I'm still learning. It's very challenging. I try to go out there. It's beautiful. The, the scenery, out in the you know, air, getting a lot of sun, lots of sun actually. So it's really good. I picked up some of that and watched this uh, program, it's, it's a uh, king of mass singer. It's called, the, uh, they compete with each other. They got the mask on, so you don't know. A lot of famous people come on, but we don't know who they are. I think we have a show like that here too. They brought him from Korea. And then watch that. And that really relieves and uh, relaxes me. I go to my son's uh, sports game. He loves soccer, basketball, you name it. He does all of it. And he's very good at it, actually. So I watch it. I get very excited. And uh, we just lost last weekend, our first loss, because he only scored one goal. He usually scored quite a few, but he just wasn't him that night, uh, that day. So I was very uh, frustrated, but, but still I was out there screaming and yelling. It was really good stress reliever too. So that's sports game. Reading and listening. I'm always reading all the time. I'm watching videos all the time about certain topic. I don't just watch you know, TV, but uh, I'm listening to audio books a lot about specific uh, topic or specific uh, person that I follow. And I do that. Gardening. I just picked up gardening. I'm, I'm ordering a bunch of stuff. I want to do a hy hypotonic. Uh, uh, it's called hypotonic, or uh, I'm learning. There's this uh, um, uh, thing called uh, a Kratky, Kratky method. Uh, this uh, a person from Hawaii invented it. You don't need electricity. It, it, it's very easy to grow uh, vegetables. So I'm learning that uh, 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 gardening right now. It's, it's a lot of fun, just ordering seeds and getting the pots ready. It's very exciting. And then relay. I call my, call my mom. She lives in uh, Guam. I, I call her twice a week, Wednesday night and Sunday night, uh, so that I, I, I call her and see how she's doing. I called old friends. My college friends, they still, I, I talked to my college friend on uh, last Friday, a couple days ago. We talked for like two and a half hours about all this stuff. We're just catching up. It's a lot of fun talking about the old days. We're always talking about the old days, right? And the old days are getting funnier and funnier. Even though it's the same story, some reason it's funnier and funnier. So we talk about that. And then frequency of association. This is something that I, when I do my relationship seminar, this is what I teach people. You cannot get along with everybody and quit that. Just think of some people you never want to associate with. Then don't, okay? Other than your family members, you're going to have to maybe do a yearly annual get together. <laughs> or some people you need to get together monthly. Some people you need to get, get together weekly. Why? You need to decide your frequency of association is very important for you. You want to get good people around you, but good people, you want to keep them around as often as possible. And the ones that you really don't want to be associated with, just keep some distance and then you just kind of schedule them. And I know it's kind of funny, but you kind of write down which person belongs to which category and do it because you, you don't want to be stressed relating to people. So you really need to cut down the, the bad relationship and do more of the good relationship. And the most important thing for me is to set goals. Why? That really relaxes me. That really uh, calms me down so I, so I know what's happening in the future. So I do personal, professional relations goals. I look at it daily in the evening time. 
and then especially what's coming up next day. And then the weekly on the Sunday evening, I get ready for that whole next week coming up. And then monthly on the last weekend, I look at the whole month and then say, what's happening next month? And then I yearly, I try to take a vacation last two weeks of the year. I try to go away somewhere where I'm just with the family. I have a lot of time on my own, on my hand to really plan out the next year. What happened this year? How can I improve next year? How can I do more and serve more? And that's what I always thinking about and setting goals as well. If you'd like to receive my daily one minute wellness messages, please sign up at 1mwellness.com. Remember, it only takes one minute to read. Until next time, be educated, get empowered, encourage others today.